G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday afternoon here in Australia. Market down ever so slightly, really just kind of stagnant, just under 1.9 trillion. Well, not just under, but 1.89 trillion. Volume, uh, again, not really much has changed. Uh, Bitcoin dominance just over 42% now, so it hasn't been there for a little while. And gas prices down ever so slightly. So again, a bit of a mixed market, not a whole lot happening. And we're really waiting to see whether the, mar uh, the market is going to break bullish or break bearish. Uh, it's definitely been <laughs> semi-bearish for a while, but we went from bearish to bullish. And now we're back to a little bit of bit a little bit of bearish and waiting to see if it's going to be a long-term bearish trend or whether this is just the typical September playing out. And once we get past it, we then start going back into uh, bullish territory. All right. Again, we can see a bit of a mixed market. There's been some that have done all right and others that haven't fared so well. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Bullyard, DYDX, they just keep making moves. 32% OKB making a nice move there. Uh, XE Cash, so we got some double digit gains and then a couple of nice uh, single digit moves. A lot of really low percentage ones though, so uh, under sort of 5%. Again, a couple above are we. Axie Infinity's been on a tear, uh, you know, almost since its inception really. Uniswap, uh, Kasama, and then again, 1% moves. We've got numerous sort of roughly 1% moves. So not too bad. What about losses though? All right, Decred taking a bit of a hit. Uh, XDC Fin, uh, so sorry, XDC Network or uh, XIN Fin Network. Phantom, uh, nearly double digit there. And then again, you know, Stock standard losses as to be expected when the market is down ever so slightly. No really major sort of gains except for that uh, first one. Again, 32% is not too bad. So DYDX and look, OKB is not too bad. Uh, but again, you know, the market has hardly moved. It's pretty much stagnant, down almost 1%, uh, but not quite. All right, let's go to the all important Bitcoin chart. Have a look what's happening here though. It does seem at the moment like 40,000, 40,500 ish thereabouts does seem to be a base. It's come down here. Now it did wick down there, but found support pretty quickly and now it just keeps bouncing off there. So you could almost draw this as a little bit uh, of a wedge forming here inside a bigger wedge. Now, will this hold? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Definitely possible that maybe we come up, touch the top, and again, we've got to come down. And again, maybe we've got to get to 38,000 thereabouts. Maybe we don't. We'll have to wait and see. It's already sort of getting late. Well, it's midweek at the moment. Uh, maybe it's just a lot of chopping around and sort of going sideways for a while. But again, I spoke about this yesterday. Bitcoin is currently in a uh, falling wedge pattern. And majority of the time, like probably 60 to 70% of the time, they're actually a bullish pattern. But there's definitely times where they can go down and then they just go even lower. So that is really what everyone's waiting on. But at the moment, 40,000. Uh, let's have a look. What is it? Because it's almost perfect. Yeah, 40,000, sort of 700, let's say thereabouts, does seem to be like a good level of support where... Bitcoin seems to be holding. And as long as Bitcoin can hold that, then the market shouldn't do too bad. But yeah, the next few days to sort of week or so, at least until September is done, and we've really got till tomorrow, <laughs> and that's the last of September. Uh, and then we'll see exactly where it sort of goes from there. Right, moving on, a couple of stories I wanted to have a look at. So Joe Rogan's come out and he has said that he believes NFTs are a hustle. I would have to agree with most of them, like literally probably 99% of them. I don't think they'll have any real long-term value in the future, but I do believe there are some. I think uh, CryptoPunks, they're almost guaranteed because they were kind of the original ones. Outside of that, it's going to be really hard to know, but a majority of them, I think, will basically trade to very, very little. I don't think they'll have a lot of real-world uh, use let alone uh, hold their value very well. But time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. Speaking of NFTs, 
Dapper Labs, who brought out the NF, uh, NBA Top Shots, they are now going to make one for NFL. So a lot of people thought, you know, maybe Chili's or Ecomi or someone like that was going to get this. And it turns out Dapper Labs has got them as well. So congratulations to Dapper Labs and congratulations on the NFL. Look, they stayed away from the NFT space for a little while and cryptocurrencies in general. And now they've at least made their way over to uh, NFTs, which is good. And again, some of these NFTs might be worth something if you get, you know, one of the first kind of ones ever and it's of a player that does really well. A lot like trading cards, you know, basketball cards and that. Some may do well, but a majority of them really won't be worth too much at all. But the real difference with the basketball cards and things like that is you've actually physically got something. If you can get something further with the NF uh, NFL NFTs, other than, again, pretty much just a JPEG, if there's something to go with it, that's what uh, might help them retain their value and be worth a little bit more. But, hey, look, NFL finally made their way across the blockchain. All right, there's lots of China stuff still going on. So uh, an Ethereum uh, mining pool has been forced to close down. So Beepool, which was the fourth largest Ethereum mining pool, will shut its operations down following Beijing slash China's anti-crypto posture. So China are really going full out now, closing down, you know, cracking down on more miners and things like that. But it doesn't stop just there. We go over to here. China's Great Firewall Census Crypto Websites, CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap, and TradingView. So they're trying to remove basically any information in China on how well cryptos may be doing. Because if the people in China can't see how well they are or aren't doing, well, particularly if they are doing well, then they're less likely to buy them. So China are really going all out to just put a stop to cryptocurrencies i think it's until they roll out their digital yuan once their yuan's really taken a foothold and all the rest of it i think they'll most likely uh, relax uh, some of the restrictions on cryptocurrencies because they no doubt understand that they're going to be a thing going forward in the future but they just want their digital yuan to really take hold and it'll be interesting to see what their crypto reg uh, regulations are like in the future but they are going very hard to shut them down right now. All right, and last but not least, Kraken are going to pay a $1.25 million fine after settling charges with the CFTC. So the CFTC alleged that the exchange offered illegal margin crypto products without registering uh, with the agency. So Kraken will pay the $1.25 million fine fine to settle the charges with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission that it ordered illegal margined digital asset trans transaction services and it did not register as a futures commodity merchant with the current uh, with the regulatory agency. They do go on further to say that uh, it's going to be interesting here on how they're going to regulate Kraken going forwards considering there really just not is there is not a lot of red regulation around crypto in general. And Kraken have come out and said they are also waiving their rights to any hearings or court review. So they're just going to pay the money. But they did say, We appreciate that today's settlement acknowledges our cooperation and engagement on the issue. We are committed to working with the regulators to try to ensure the rules governing digital assets create a level playing field globally and one that allows crypto space in the US to flourish while protecting the interests of individuals and the integrity of the industry. So Kraken, they're accepting their fine. And again, it's a slap on the wrist, $1.25 million. There's not really a lot of money to Kraken. I'm sure they'll be able to cover that quite easy. But it is interesting that they said, you know, they want the US to be, you know, a major player in crypto. Uh, and it's a little bit of a, just a wake up call again that, you know, you don't want to get left behind. China cracking right down on crypto. Does US want to follow suit with China? Or do they want to go in the other direction? And again, crypto is taking over. You know, it's not taking over just yet, but it's growing at an exponential rate faster than any other technology we've ever seen before. Why wouldn't America want to get on the front foot of that rather than try and crush it and become China, which is, you know, something that they definitely don't want to be, is like China. So very, very interesting times. Again, are we going to see... You know, within the next sort of 24, 48 hours, and it probably won't be on the exact day, and this is Australia time, so 29th today is really the 28th over in the States. 
or just going on to the 29th. But will we slowly start to see this uh, uptick? Has this been the floor? Is basically 40,500 the floor where Bitcoin might range around here for a while before it then starts to make its next uh, sort of move upwards? Uh, and then, you know, again, finish the year nice and strongly and maybe not even finish the year, but go into next year nice and strong and getting setting new all time highs. And I've said this before, here's the marks I'm looking for. I want to see us break 45,000 before I get too excited. And I'm not touching altcoins. As I said, I really am not. Even though they look great on the charts at the moment, you just get too brutalized. If Bitcoin goes up and we think it's going into, no, it doesn't, and then comes back down. The altcoins are bleeding. Yeah, they pump for a couple of days, but then they lose a whole stack of that. And particularly if Bitcoin does start to go down. So I won't be touching altcoins until we break above 53,000. And again, not just some random wick, we need to show a good general uptrend. Otherwise, I'll be just focusing on Bitcoin and a little bit of Ethereum and predominantly stable coins. Again, until I see a true uh, reversal in the market. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Good on you if you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time.